Okay, so now we're going to draw the entire figure using these primitive forms. And what I want you to do is practice looking through this and thinking a little bit gesturally about the body, even though we're using some pretty solid forms and, and basic shapes. Uh, again, the main thing we want to consider here is the difference in orientation from the head, the torso to the pelvis. And then we'll attach the limbs with cylinders. Uh, you can taper those inward as you see me doing here. It gives a better sense and feeling of uh, there being an arm or leg in place. And then attach the hand with a wedge-like shape and just some smaller cylinders uh, or a gestural hand pose. That's fine. The main thing here isn't that you try to get something that looks exactly like a person, but really that you think a little bit more abstract about the body. So in this one, I'm starting off with more of a stick person, just establishing the overall lengths of the forms and then jumping into the, uh, the primitives. So even though I'm drawing a, um, a pretty solid rigid character here, I'm trying to implement a sense and a feeling of an idea, a bit of narrative really, that this character has had a bad day and they're kind of leaned over and slumped over. Uh, so a bit of posturing. And so that's one of the things I really like about this exercise is since we're thinking abstractly about the body, it makes it easier to draw, but then also we're st still wanting to implement some of the, you know, the body language that you see in people. Uh, so what I recommend that you do here is take, uh, you know, visual cues from, you could be sitting in a coffee shop, looking at people around you and drawing them in this way, or you could be watching one of your favorite movies and then pausing a certain shot that you think is, uh, you know, awe-inspiring, but then draw it in this very primitive, basic way. And what's neat about that process is it teaches you about simplification of things that we generally perceive as just too complex. Uh, and I really like that about doing this type of study because the human body is complex and it can be very uh, intimidating to draw. But if you learn to itemize it and simplify it in this way, uh, it can really help you out. It, it can save you not only from things that you don't feel uh, confident at drawing right now, it can save you from those bad days when you've been drawing well for months and then all of a sudden you feel like you're, you're just not drawing as well. The fundamentals in the simplification process that I, that I find in this type of study really helps with that. So... Uh, just just be aware of that, that we all have our bad days and there's times that we need to get back to the basics. And I definitely feel like this is a, a perfect example of that. So I'm cleaning this up for you just so that you have better art files, but you don't really need to do that. In fact, I would recommend that instead of you trying to clean up the work and make it, you know, as nice as I'm trying to do here for your uh, visual guides, that I would just log in more poses. So instead of doing four, I'd rather see that you do 10 or even 20. Uh, but again, you can leave the lines a little bit more sketched out. That's fine. Uh, I just, I'm, I mainly want to see variation in the, the posing of the character. So I want you to really envision what these characters might be doing as you're drawing these out and, and really delve into that story of it. So even though you're just drawing these primitive versions of the body, I want you to think about, you know, what are the characters doing? What are they saying? What, what are they wearing? Uh, what setting are they in? Uh, give yourself some food for thought. Even though you're not going to implement that into the drawing, you'd be amazed at what it does for your creativity and allows you to start going a bit further with it. So for instance, if you think about the character here with their hand up and their other arm back and they're walking forward, uh, there's a difference of expression if the head is tilted downward or the head is tilted upward. If the head is tilted slightly away from the body versus with the body, right? All these little subtle differences will make a difference in what's going on in the scene in the body language of the character. And it's easy to just tell you to draw that, you know, draw a head tilted this way, draw a head tilted downward. Uh, but it's more important that you actually think about the why. So, you know, why are their is their head down? Why is it tilted away from the body? Are they trying to look confidently away? For what reason? So again, giving yourself this food for thought, even though you're doing these very primitive abstract versions, can be a great way to supercharge your creativity 
Uh, I definitely do that with every drawing that I do. I, I try to think as much about what's going on in that scene and that helps me develop ideas uh, and spark new ideas as well. So now I'd like you to take the time to draw at least 10 of these poses, try different camera angles, different scenarios, really push yourself and your imagination to do uh, as much as you can uh, with as much variation as you can. I would love to see the work. And with that, we'll stop here and head over to our next lesson.